So the, this first one is exactly like a couple of the last few of your homework. And so the way we do these is pick a side. It's actually the same strategy as what you did when the right side was just a number. So just for a moment <clears throat> to remind you, if this was 5 here, remember we took the, what's inside of this absolute value, we set it equal to 5 or negative 5, because to get an absolute value of 5, we could have 5 or negative 5 inside. Here's what I mean. Both of those give you 5, right? Which means what's inside must have to give you 5 or negative 5 for that to be true. Okay? So that was like the first however many of your homework. That was basically the way those work. This is no different. At least in terms of concept, it's no different. So we're still going to keep that inside of that left one. And we still need to do a positive and negative case. The only thing that you need to be careful with let's get rid of it, is that this is now a group. So instead of 5 and negative 5, like we had a second ago, it's going to be the inside made positive, which is just copying it down, or negative, and for that one I would suggest putting it in parentheses. So you don't miss that it's both things that need to change sign. Okay? Again, the left side stays the same. And you can choose. You can, we could have done this by keeping the right side the same and taking the opposite of the left side. It, it doesn't matter which side you pick. But what matters is here's the positive version, here's the negative version. Just like the 5 a second ago. We took a positive and a negative of it. Well, it's just a caution. Um, let's see if I can erase it. I'll just rewrite it. I don't want this to happen. If you just stick your negative there, and then 2x minus 2, do you see how only the 2x got switched? Yeah. But if we put this in parentheses, now it's negative 2x and plus 2. That's how it needs to be, because it's opposite of both. From here, we just solve like normal, so get our x's together, minus 2x on both sides. Let's combine steps. Subtract 8 from both sides, and we'll get negative 7x equals negative 10, and then x equals 10 sevenths. And then down below, we should get a different result. So again, we need to distribute. That's why I want you to put parentheses around it. Then we'll subtract, actually let's add our 2x, subtract 8, negative 3x equals negative 6, and you'll get 2. How do you check if those are both correct? Yeah. So for checking, negative 5 times 2. Actually, I wanted the 2 is easy to check. Let's practice with the 7 tenths instead. Or 10 sevenths, rather. Uh, so negative 5, and this is all in absolute value. So negative 5 times 10 sevenths plus 8. Does that equal the absolute value of 2 times 10 sevenths plus 8? How would you check that? Like, how would you? I'm not asking how I would do it. How would you do that? You solve it. Well, yes, you do. I mean, we're all going to solve it, but with this 10 sevenths, what would you do? Yeah, let me. Uh, like, multiply the outside by, like, common denominator to get rid of the fraction. Can we do that with the absolute values there? 
No, we can't multiply across an absolute value. Okay. Well, if you have a calculator, you could make this a decimal. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, but you can. Yeah. Could you go up for a second? No, I'm going to go back to it in a minute. We're going to talk about this first. So guys, can you, you can handle fractions, right? How do you multiply negative 5 by 10 7? It's just multiply, like negative 57, right? Now you say, well, I need to add that to 8. So how many 7s is 8 whole? 8 holes, I guess. How many 7s is that? It's 1. 1 7 is the same as 8 whole things. Okay. It's 56 7 How do we know it's 56 7 Yeah, so 56 7 Let's do the same on the other side. We get 20 7 And we also, was that an 8 also? Yes. No, it was a 2. 2x two minus 2. So. so 20 7 And then what is, how many 7 is 2 holes? Minus 14 sevenths. Okay, so far no calculator needed. This becomes 6 sevenths. And that becomes 6 sevenths. So are they, is that a correct solution? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also 2 works. So I'm not going to go through checking it, but it works also. Okay, how about this one? If you're curious and plan to go beyond Algebra 2, write this strategy down. You'll be using it probably later on in pre-calc and calc. For sure calc. So we have two absolute values of x plus 2. Go ahead. Uh, may I ask why you left the 8 as positive and not mm -hmm. negative? Can you give the other expression? Because you turned 2 into a negative. Yeah, because this side, he's asking why did I change the sign of the 2, but not the 8. It's because this side we just leave alone. Like I didn't change anything about this side on either one of them, right? Oh, oh I thought you turned the, the 5 into a negative. It was negative at the beginning. Oh. Good? Yeah, okay. so you always leave it like that We change the st second expression? Yes. Pick one of them and leave it and then change the other. It doesn't always have to be the left. It could be change the, or keep the right, change the left. Okay. That's how London did it, in fact. It's up to you. Okay. But I think you should have a strategy. Like, if, if this works for you, then change the right side and keep the left and just go with it. That's how you should go about these. Okay, so here's how we're going to work through this one. And this is a pretty powerful strategy when you have something going on that's a little more complicated that you want to simplify and then come back to the complication. Here's what I mean. Do you see how we have x plus 2 in both cases? That we consider a like term. Okay? Yes? Oh. So she's asking, can you put your phone away and turn around and quit? Quit. No, we cannot combine across an absolute value. So if you think of PEMDAS, the absolute value is higher than multiplying or adding. So I'll just write it up here. So you can't, we can't be like, hey, this is 2 plus 2 or 2 minus whatever, or 2x, because we have these higher order functions in there. Right? Absolute value is higher than close to. Okay? But we can consider them to be like terms. So call this A maybe and A. So A we're going to call as absolute value of x plus 2. It's called substitution. And we're going to substitute and then come back and resubstitute. And it will allow us to solve this way easier. So if I rewrite this, I have A minus 2a. Do you agree that that's way simpler looking? Okay, so a is taking the place of absolute value of x plus 2 right now. It's substituted in 
we know it's like a placeholder for the, this more complicated expression here, but we're going to do a little bit of basic work on just the letter A. Are you following? Okay. So from here, we can work with A like it's just any other variable. So what is A minus 2A? It's negative A. Okay. We want to get rid of the negative next. How would we do that? Y by negative 1. Now we have A equals negative 4. That's way easier than dealing with all those absolute values, right? Well, now we have it simplified to the point where we're ready to bring that back. So we take this and we plug it back for A. And now we have absolute value of x plus 2 equal to 4. Now what would you do? Positive negative case. Perfect. So we have, if you want to draw the split, that's fine. We have x plus 2 equals 4, and x plus 2 equals negative 4. And from there, it's just the usual. So we'll get 2 and negative 6. So guys, that strategy of substituting, taking a complicated expression and calling it something else for a while, so you get it simplified down and then plugging it back in, is a powerful tool that you can use uh, in this class, but also in classes to come. What do you think? Keep, keep that in the back of your mind as a strategy and tool. Any questions on it? Okay. Any questions on the homework? The the bar, or the apps? What is it called? Open sex? Open sex homework? That's not a question. So, how many of you checked your answers? Remember, you can click on the blue link. Okay? Alright, that's a good bunch of you. And I'm going to pull... Well, we did this one, which was, to me, probably some of the harder ones. I guess... Let's pull one other one off of there, and just a, as a reminder of what to do with these absolute value ones. Anybody have a suggestion? Okay. Yes? 449. If we subtract 5, what, what happens on the right side? Can an absolute value be negative? So, no solution on that. And guys, it's not because there's fractions in those. I know it seemed like that, maybe. But that had nothing to do with it. It's not like all the fraction ones are no solution, is what I'm saying. Okay, what about these kind? minuscule little thing, you can't even see it. First step. Good. Okay. Then divide by two. So we're working to get the absolute value by itself. And just wanted to check in and make sure these are going okay. So this is where we set it equal to 2 and negative 2. <coughs> so how do you feel like absolute value solving is going? Okay. So mostly thumbs up. If you're, if you're kind of still here, I didn't assign all these, so I would go back and do some and just check your answers. Pick odd ones, do them, check them, and if they're still not going well, come ask for help. Yeah. <coughs> I forgot my 
looking for there. Is that all? Your test on this first chapter will be next week, okay? I see you guys Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so it will be Friday for you. We have two topics left, and I don't know, they're kind of new probably for most of you. You might have heard some of the words before, but the way we're going to use them is going to be new. So with this solving, the absolute value solving, we're kind of marking the end of maybe review, but for sure marking the end of linear solving. So think back to all we've done. We've solved equations with fractions, just regular, regular old equations of various kinds. Then we went into systems of two equations, then three equations, and solved systems of linear inequalities by graphing and shading, and now this. So it's a lot of solving. We also wrote equations for lines with slope and intercept, remember? Okay. Now we're going to shift gears and not solve. It's quite a shift. So grab your yellow notes. topics are specifically going to be dealing with functions and function notations today and then next time we're going to start graphing a particular function called the absolute value function and learning how to transform that meaning how to move it around how to flip it over change its shape using an equation so you did a lot of that in geometry but now we're doing it with equations and what's important is that we are going to be doing this with every single unit that we do the rest of the year. Okay? So we are laying a pretty critical foundation in the next few days. We will pick it up again in the next chapter and go a little deeper, but don't dismiss this. Like I said, literally every unit we do, we're going to do functions. How do we graph it? How do we transform it? All that. What's domain and range and all that stuff. Okay? You guys heard those words before? Don't mean to read. So, take two minutes. Talk to somebody next to you about these, this list of questions. All right, function. Did anybody give you a good definition? Do you feel like you were wowed by their knowledge of functions? Nobody? Not even Aubrey? Hmm. What does F with parentheses X and G parentheses X mean? Okay, so we're kind of starting at the beginning. Anybody remember domain and range? Yeah? Yeah, uh, domain is like all the values of x and range is all the values of y. Awesome, yeah. All right, so let's get into this. <clears throat> Guys, we're going to use this word very sparingly because mostly we'll talk functions. But a relation is kind of the foundation for a function, and it's just a set of ordered numbers, meaning points on a graph, right? So if you just splatter a bunch of points on a graph, you've created a relation. And if it goes beyond that, maybe it becomes a function. We'll talk about that in a second. John hit it right on the head. So all the x values are the domain, and all the y values are the range. And we're going to add some clarifying words to that when we define them. These two are part of what we call key features of a graph. So there will be seven or eight of these key features that I'll ask you to memorize and know. Domain and range are two of the main ones, okay? Other ones would be like x-intercept, y-intercept, places where it's going up and down, positive, negative, okay? Those are kind of the main ones. So a function, we take that relation, and this is kind of a wordy definition, so let's pick out some of the key words. So a relation that takes an element in its domain, so an x value, gives exactly one y value. 
Okay, exactly one output for each input. That makes it a function. Okay? What is the word function in everyday life? What does it mean? Just in, not in math world, but just to work. To work. Okay? Good? What were you going to say? To work. Okay? So we have this idea that it does something, right? A function does something. Same here, okay? A function does something. One of the parent functions that we're going to look at is x squared. So if we think of it, and you've probably seen a silly picture like this before, think of it like some kind of machine that you put stuff into. It does something, so the function does something to the value, and then spits out an output. So if we put 6 into this function, what is our output? 36. So the idea here is this is an input, it's an x. This is an output for y. This is the domain. This is the range. And of course, this is the function itself. Okay? So our functions obviously will grow in complexity. It won't just be x squared, but get if we get the basic idea of it, then it really helps. Okay. So one big piece of the definition of this is that it has to create exactly one of those range values for each x. So if I put 6 in here, I only get 36 out. So it is a function. Can you think of a situation where I could plug something in and get more than one thing out? Like, is there ever such thing as a non-function? Or is everything we graph a function? Okay? I'm not going to answer that, because we're going to see it in a second, and then we'll see what you think when we get there. We're not going to use these as a big part of our math, but just as we're learning it, these map pictures are kind of helpful. So why is this called a function and that one is not? Let's see if you can read the map. Think of this as x and y, etc. Yeah, actually, hold on, let's let people think real quick. So why is the left one a function and not the right one? Where do you see that fall apart in the second one? I see it fall apart when three have number of six times. Yeah. So on the left, all five numbers only create or only map to one number on the right. On the on this one, the three maps to two different numbers. In other words, it creates or outputs two different numbers. So it fails to be a function. Okay? Let's look at this slightly differently. <clears throat> Is this top one a function? No. For the same reason, right? Lydia has two phone numbers. Same with Marty. What would be our domain in this case? And you don't have to say it all, but just describe it. What would be the domain? The names. And the range would be? The numbers. Good. All right. How about this one down here? Let me make it a little bigger. So again, I'll, don't shout it out, just think for yourself. Is that representing a function? All right, everybody vote with your thumb, yes or no? Okay, it is not a function, why? Yeah? Because uh, 27 has for outputs and so one and yeah so 1 8 and 27 I'll create two values instead of just one good so not a function this is called set notation 
So if you can't see, the things on the end are braces and points in the middle. Those create a set. Okay, so a set of numbers. How about these? A little bit harder. So still asking, is it a function? This one I'm going to give you some time to work on. Think of a strategy, how are you going to even be able to tell me? 30 seconds. Talk, talk about it. Everybody grab your graphing calculator. That's how we're going to check this. So we're going to shift to graph world. Go ahead and graph the first one. And I'm hoping that me telling you to graph the first one means you know how to get it graphable. So go ahead and do that, please. How do we get this one graphable, just so you're not sitting there waiting? Yeah, so this should be, once you subtract 2x, come on, y equals 7 minus 2x. There's our graph. How can we tell by looking at a graph if it's a function? How can we tell by looking at a graph if it's a function? So you should enter, if you're still waiting to enter, 7 minus 2x, right? We have to get the y by itself. Those of you who are still staring at your calculator, you know what it looks like now. It's a line. So how do we know if it's a function or not? Remember our definition says one input gives exactly one output. So I'm going to go with her this time. It's a straight line. No circle. It's just a straight line. But how do we know that's a function? Or is it not? Maybe it's not. Alberto, what are you going to say? If you make a straight line up and down across the graph, it will never, the way that you will know it's a function, it won't make sense because it's more than divided. Okay. Guys, pick an x value. I'm going to pick 2. Let's change the color though. Pick 2, that's an input, and go hit your graph. How many times does it hit the graph? One. One. So it's only giving one output, right? So my input was 2, my output was whatever it maps over to the y-axis to me, okay? Same thing down here. Let's say I picked this x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and go hit your function. How many times does it hit that function? Once, so therefore it's only giving one output, okay? Yeah? Yes, not on this one. That's why it's a function. If we can hit it twice, is it a function? No. No. Okay. So let's check the next one. Go ahead and enter this one, x squared plus 1. And I'm going to just, instead of the line, I'm going to do it that. 
in that place. So x squared plus 1. Can you get on your calculator and put in x squared plus 1? Yeah. You do need to know how to graph on your calculator. So this is part of learning that. She was talking to you. Not just, but definitely yes. Okay, here's what you should see for that one. Is it a function? No. Okay, I'm hearing no. Let's go pick some x values. And let's pick one. I go up, how many times does it hit the function? Or the line, maybe we should say that. It hits it once. Okay, let's hit, let's pick three. Go up, and how many times would it hit that? Once. Okay, pick negative one. It hits once. Negative 2 hits once, negative 3 hits once. So these are always only giving one y value when I plug in one x value. Do you see that? So is it a function? It is indeed a function, yep. Okay. Next one. We need to get this graphable, which means what? How do you make something ready to put into your graphing calculator where it says y equals? All right, let's subtract x first. y squared equals 3 minus x. Now what? We want to get y by itself, because your calculator doesn't say y squared. It says y. So let's square root both sides. What happens when you square root? What do you have to consider? You guys remember? Like, what's the square root of 4? 2 and... Negative 2, right? 2 and negative 2. So what's the square root of 3 minus x? Well, one of them is the square root of 3 minus x. What's the other one? Negative square root of 3 minus x. Okay? Did everybody see where that came from? Okay, go put those in your calculator, please. When you graph those, here's what those look like. So, is it a function? Some of you are saying no right away. Let's go see. Let's pick this x value right here. How do you know if that's going to give us a y value or more than 1? Well, you, you always go find your function from there. So if I go up, I hit the function. But if I go down, I also hit the function. So how many y values come out of just this 1x? 2. So is it a function? No, because that would be two outputs for one input. Okay? So this one is no. This one was yes. Um, I should have graphed these, like, sketched them on here, but... Yes, and yes. And then no for that one. Alright, grab your notes. Let's write a few things from what we have done so far. Anybody been studying your notes? No? One, two, maybe? Where am I here?
this is a new concept, so I'm going to sort of separate it out. So a function is a relation that what? Because processing what we're doing? A relation that... We just checked a bunch of things if they were functions or not. One y value for each x. Underline this phrase so it assigns exactly one output. We're going to start using these words output and input more often, so try to get used to that. So one out, exactly one output, which is y, for each input, which is x. As you'll see functions in the form of an equation, graph, maybe even a table. Okay? So we've looked at equations and graphs now. Did you guys hear Alberto a minute ago say if you draw a vertical line through and it hits more than once, it's not a function? Did you hear that? That's actually a um, simple but very effective test that has a name in algebra Well, and above. It's called the vertical line test. So... We're going to put it here. That was basically what we were doing when we picked an x coordinate and checked how many times it hit the function. So here's how that works. If a vertical line drawn through graph intersects more than once, it is not a function. Super easy to do but very effective. Okay. We also read about domain and range, so let's go ahead and write about those while we're here. And I'm going to drop this. That's going too far. Domain and range. Next to domain, write x. Next to range, write y. So you have a quick reference there if you need it. And so the domain is all allowable or used x values. And I want you to write two words on the end here. This is horizontal. And it's inputs. When you're looking for the domain, you're looking horizontally across your graph. In fact, most of our key features are going to be x values. There's only just the range that's not. That's going to be confusing to some of you, unfortunately. Range is all 
y values. So say look vertical and these are the outputs. When we write vertical, what we're really doing is looking from bottom up. That's what we mean by vertical. Bottom up. So what we're going to get into is identifying whether something is a function and giving its domain and range. Okay? And then we're going to talk about how to evaluate functions. Like I said, there's a lot today. And then we'll be done. Everybody good? Yep. You'll see. Let's do a couple and then you'll see what I mean. All right, so here are two graphs. We don't know if they're a function. Let's, deter let's practice deter determining that. Is this a function? Yes. So if we drop a vertical line, it only ever intersects that black line one time, right? So it's only giving one output for each of those x values that I just chose. So yes, it is a function. Okay, what about the domain? So we just wrote allowed or used x values. So what x values is this line using to create its outputs? Sorry, what? Yeah, but that one's specific numbers. So we're looking left to right, horizontal, we're looking at x values. What x values create this line when I plug it in? Is the question, yeah. What? Three, negative five is there. Oh, I got you, sorry. Three and negative five. Do you agree those make it those if I put in three or negative five, I will get a y value on my line? Yes, is that all? No. Well, how many more? Infinite. infinite, right? Why is it infinite? Like what about it tells us it's infinite? The arrows. So how where does this start? Think interval notation. Where does it start? It starts clear back at negative infinity and goes to positive. Good job. Positive infinity. We are capturing every x value by drawing this line. How about the range? This is y now. So this is what, London, this is what I meant by we're reading bottom up. Where does this graph start giving y values? Two. Two? But I see y values all down here, all down there, all up, right? This line will continue to go down for how long? Forever. So where does it start in terms of range? No, you can't start at infinity. You can start at negative infinity, but you can never start at infinity. Why? How do we write intervals? Go ahead, Isaac. Bigger number on the right. Furthest left number or furthest down number on the left side. Or smallest number, like he was saying. So this is negative infinity to infinity, but this is now y direction, not x direction. Okay? How about that one? First of all, is it a function? Nope. If we drop a vertical line, it hits more than once. It's not a function. But what about its domain?
Right, so we're scanning left to right horizontally. We're scanning x values. We first hit one where? Negative 1. Is that a bracket or a parenthesis on that? Bracket, because it can be negative 1. There is a point right there, so it is actually at negative 1. And then where does it go from there? Infinite, right? It will never stop going to the right. So parentheses on infinity. Domain and then range. How about range? <laughs> Yeah, those arrows indicate it will go forever down and forever up, right? So, again, range, we're reading bottom to top. This arrow will go down to infinity, so negative infinity starts it off. That top arrow goes to positive infinity. So, our range is all y values possible. Make sense? Okay. And we wrote that, so let's have you guys do these. I'll give you, all right, the first one, yes, it's a function, and this is called a quadratic function, and it will be the focus of our entire chapter two, is that kind of function. So after this chapter, we start looking at specific individual types of functions. That's the first one. It's a function. Domain is, I'm going to use, well, let's write it once or twice, and then I'll just switch over to D and R. Negative infinity to infinity, and the range, negative 1, looks like, to infinity. This one needs a bracket, because it can actually be negative 1. Okay, how about the circle? Function? No. No. And then the domain and range both are negative 2 to positive 2 with the bracket. So both domain and range are the same in that case. How about the, what is that one called? It's not an oval. That's like what people in craft school call it. What is this in math? We probably won't have time to get to a unit called conic sections, but you will get to that probably if you take AP pre-calc. All right, anyway, an ellipse. So domain, is it a function, first of all? No. And the domain, negative 2 to 2 again. How about the range this time? Yeah, you guys are right on top of it. This one, domain and range, uh, both are negative infinity to infinity. Okay, and this is a function. All lines are functions. How'd that go? Okay. All right, this is the same picture as that was just there, but I'm going to change this. What if this was a closed circle instead of an arrow? And so let's use a... open circle on this one. How would that change your domain and range? It's still a function, but how would it change your domain and range? Maybe? So which one would be infinite? What? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, domain and range don't reference specific points on there. Everybody write it down. Do the domain array. Then we'll see if he's right. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Domain and range. Before, it was negative infinity to infinity for domain and negative 1 to infinity for range. So, see if it's the same.
I know that wasn't quite enough time, but it's okay. Left and right. Where do we first start picking up x values now without the arrow? Somewhere down here. Let's call it, just for, for easy sake for this example, let's call it negative 3. Right? Can it be negative 3? Can it be negative 3? Yeah, closed circle, negative 3. Okay? Now we're still picking up x values as we go across until we hit that point. And we're going to call that point positive 3. Can it be positive 3? No. Why? Open circle. That changed our domain way, way a lot, right? It was negative infinity to positive infinity, and now it's very narrow. Not even six numbers, whole numbers wide. That it can be, that it is included. Not included, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because it can, remember, bracket means can be a number, parenthesis means can't be a number. should read your notes once in a while, it's in there. <laughs> How about range? Yeah? Negative 1 to positive 1. So here's what he said. Do we agree with that? So I'm scanning, scanning, scanning. Do I hit values right here? Why not? Because those say stop there, right? Now, without the arrows, it says stop there. Okay, let's, so the negative 1 is good. It does start at negative 1. Where does it stop? Yeah, let's call it 10. 9 or 10. But, I mean, you'll, when I have you do these, I want specific numbers, but for this case, I put it kind of randomly in the middle. So this is 10. Now we need to decide bracket parenthesis. Can it be negative 1? Is there actually points on the graph at negative 1? Yes. Bracket. <coughs> ugly bracket. Bracket, how about 10? If we trace this side up, it says no, but the left side says yes. So which do we, do we go with? Yes. We go with yes, because it does get 10, it's just not on both sides. So bracket. Yeah? So like if one side is smaller than the other side, then you just go with the bigger side? Yeah, good, good question. So he said, what if this, what if this was like that? Where do the y values stop? Still, they still go up to 9, right? Well, we would put an open circle or a parenthesis on 10, like we, we would, that's what we'd do there. But they still go up higher than this point. Yeah, good job for asking. All right, next. Guys, this is the last bit. We're, we're going to have to cruise through this. You've done it before, at least, I think. Function notation, we use that f, g, h, we say f of x. Remember that? Does that sound familiar? So let's grab your notes and start writing. <laughs> On domain and range, now that we've talked about it, add this real quick. Use interval notation. There are notes on interval notation previously in your packet, so if you're if you're still kind of lost on that, go um, go read them. So we're going to use f of x, uh, where f is the name. 
We can use other letters too. Like we will use G, we'll use H, etc. But it's the name of the function. This part represents the domain. The input values and domain. Um, but up here, take off the, the X part. I don't want this twice. So F, just put F. Then down here, let's put the X with it, and that is the output values. And it's the range. And then over here underneath function notation, maybe, seriously, maybe just write say. Okay. Remind yourself that we say f of x. It's not fx. Okay, it's f of x. f of x. You've been on there a lot today. Your phone. All right. Last thing is how do we evaluate a function? Add a point. So evaluating a function at a point. You guys have probably done this, but we'll see. Evaluate. Sometimes students don't know what that means, so it means to get a value or simplify. So let me show you what this looks like, and then we'll come back and finish this note. So have it handy, but you need to know what you're dealing with, I think, before you write the note about it. So if you didn't quite finish, that's fine. Okay, so we have this function. Let me zoom that a little. So it's telling us it is a function, 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, so we know, hopefully you know now that it's a parabola because it's squared, so it's a, it's a quadratic function. And it wants us to evaluate this function at 3, negative 1, and just t. Okay, so write this down somewhere as an example. So write f of 3, and what that means is to plug 3 in for x. Okay, so we say f of 3. Notice that in the notation, 3 took the place of x. You see that? It was f of x, now there's a 3 instead. So that means we need to replace the x's with 3. That's, that's literally all that we're doing. So f of 3 is 3 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 1. Use parentheses when you substitute, when you plug in. And now we simplify. Okay? So we get, can I do 3 times 3 and then square that? Here? Is it 3 times 3 and then square? Make sure you follow order of operations. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you this warning. So, there's nothing to do here. 
Students want to treat this like it's something you have to do something with. It's not. It's just notation. It says f of 3, and that's all. You don't do anything with it. All you're doing is on the other side, okay? How about negative 1? What do we do with negative 1? Just plug it in for the x, right? So negative 1 squared. Again, make sure you're using parentheses. What is negative 1 squared? Positive 1. So f of negative 1 is 6. It says take whatever you're given and plug it into your machine, your function machine. All right. Sure. Okay, so I'm honestly, so she's asking why am I not writing the F part for the second one? If I was doing this work on my own paper as a student, I wouldn't write anything but the first one. So higher level math, which is where you guys are and headed, you don't need to rewrite this over and over again. You just line up your equal sign, write it once, and you know that following down f of negative 1 is what you end up with over here. Okay. So if you're planning to go further in math, this is how your work should look. I did it here, and I did it there honestly because I anticipate students needing to look back at the example, and they need to know what is the final result, but I don't. Like in my work, I'd never write it again. Just, I mean, it might be 10 steps later, but it's the same thing on the left side, so you don't need to rewrite it 10 times. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what happens if we're substituting in an expression? Where did that go? Here we go. So look down here. We have a simpler function, but we have stuff instead of numbers to plug in. So h of x is 2x plus 1. What is h of x plus 1? Yeah. Instead of plugging in a number, you just plug in the thing that you're told to plug in. So 2, plug in x plus 1. Don't forget your plus 1 at the end. That was part of the original. And then simplify. So from here we distribute. And we get 2x plus 3. Guys, there's this misconception that you have to get a result, like an answer. That's not what we're doing. We're substituting and simplifying. That's all. Substitute and simplify. Okay. Yeah, see you Friday. And I'll see you, when will I see you guys? Monday. I'll see you guys Monday. Yeah.